Hello folks, Dick Fairburn here. Talking about self-defense cartridges. We're going to shift gears. We've been talking about semi-automatics so far. Let's get into the two most common revolver rounds still being used for self-defense and still viable for self-defense. Today, we're going to talk about the 38 Special. You want to hear what I think about the 38? Just stay tuned. For several generations in the United States, the 38 Smith & Wesson Special was THE handgun round for both police and civilian, as well as the military. In fact, in 1979, when I got out of the Army, 38 Specials were still being issued to female military police officers. So the old Smith & Wesson Model 10s with their 38 ammo was still being used. When the 357 Magnum came on the scene, and for those of, you know, one or two of you out there that might not know, both the 38 and the 357 Magnum fire .357 inch projectiles. So they share that common size. Uh, how they got the name 38, I'm told, was 38 was kind of the outside dimension of the case, uh, whereas they're really only about a 36 caliber bullet. When they went to the 357 Magnum, they extended the case. They added the, a lot of pressure to get a lot more velocity. Uh, they, they used the actual bullet diameter. The 357 Magnum 38 Special are completely interchangeable in the 357 Magnum revolver. The 357 came out in 1935, and at the time, it was billed as the most powerful handgun in the world. At that time. It's subsequently been beaten out a number of times. But the 357 was something of a hand cannon when it came out. But the 38 remained primarily the police cartridge and for a lot of civilians as well, well after 1935 when the Magnum came out. In the police departments of many major U.S. cities, the 38 Special held on into the 1980s, generally being replaced gradually by 9mm semi-auto pistols as law enforcement started that, you know, change from 99% revolvers to 99.9% .9 semi-autos that we see today. With civilians, the 38 has always been a mainstay. And most of the people that I knew that carried 38s back in the day or even nowadays generally do it in a short barrel, what we like to call a snub nose revolver. So a two inch 38 has been very popular for a, a long, long time. In fact, snub nose revolvers to this day are being manufactured by several different companies in several different countries. While you can commonly see them in the display cases at a gun store, they sell pretty well. You know, five-shot Smith & Wesson J-frames, six-inch Colts, Charter Arms, Ruger, several other companies have those 38s out there, and they're selling very well to this day. Now, I don't have a five-shot Smith & Wesson J-frame in my inventory right now. I've gone through several over the years. In fact, when the Model 60, the very first stainless steel revolver, came on the market, I got one. And I literally shot that thing to death. I mean, we had to rebuild the hand a couple of times to keep it from spitting lead. And they can be very accurate little revolvers if you put enough time and effort into their training. The Colts were always just a little bit bigger, uh, kind of based on the police positive frame, but they held six rounds. One round make a difference? Yeah, it can. And in today's climate, where we see cops carrying Glock 17s with plus four base plates on them so they can get them up to 21 rounds in the magazine, and I saw one officer with one in the Glock and three more of those magazines on his belt one time, so we're talking 80 some, 85 rounds. Can a five shot J frame still be a viable self defense weapon? And I, my answer is yes. There have always been multiple adversary events where you've had to deal with more than one bad guy, but they're pretty rare, actually. The most common form of multiple adversary criminal event I've heard of lately are carjackings in some of the major cities, particularly in Chicago. 
uh, they will trap a car in traffic and sometimes two or three people are going to run up and, and take that car away from the driver. So yes, there are events where five rounds is not going to be enough, six rounds is not going to be enough, but typically they are enough. If you place your shots well, if you plan on missing a lot, and you know the average hit rate for most police departments is probably around 25 to 30 percent, so if you plan on missing with 70 to 75 percent of your shots, then those uh, plus four magazine extensions might be good for you. But if you can keep your wits about you and you have five or six rounds in a revolver, you can do pretty well in most adversarial confrontations that you're going to deal with. Now, for many years, the Universal 38 Special Carry Load was a 158 grain lead round nose bullet. And that consistently gave very poor terminal performance. There are a lot of cases with guys that took five or six decent hits with those round nose lead bullets and did a lot of damage before they were eventually brought to, to bay. Supervel, as I've mentioned before in other categories, Supervel brought out some of the first lighter jacketed hollow point loads in the 1970s. But most of the other ammo manufacturers followed pretty closely. I mentioned the police marksman stopping power study that we did in the early 1990s. And interestingly enough, the number one performing round with about 77% stops was this one. And I'll show you some close-ups of these. This is a lead 158 grain semi wood cutter hollow point. Very soft lead. And I can show you some examples of what they look like when you test them in gelatin or water or things like that. They tend to expand very well. Again, we'll show you close-ups. And very consistently. And when I tested them in jugs full of water, leading up to, you know, correlating that data with 10% gelatin, I fired them out of both 4-inch barrels and 2-inch barrels, and they penetrate almost exactly the same, and they expand almost exactly the same. So this is as good a short barrel load as it is a long barrel load. Most of the manufacturers back in those days, say in the, in the early 90s, were making that load. Winchester, Remington, Federal. Winchester still has it available in a plus P loading, which is what I recommend you shoot. And it is their SPD, 38 SPD load. Federal still makes one that is a not plus P load. If you're carrying a lightweight J-frame Smith & Wesson, the recoil can be pretty severe, so you might want that non plus P load as a better choice for that. And there are a lot of other loads out there. Most of the manufacturers make a dedicated snub nose load. Nowadays, it's generally a plus P. Bullets tend to range from 125 to 135 grain jacketed hollow points. The hollow points are optimized to perform well at the kind of velocities you're getting from those loads. And they give pretty decent performance. Most of them expand fairly well, and most of them hover right around that 12-inch penetration in 10% gelatin. And 12 is the minimum recommended in the, uh, the FBI 8-part test. Few loads from a 2-inch barrel, even the plus P loads, can deliver both consistent expansion and 12 or more inches of penetration. So in that respect, when you're shooting a snub nose, you're getting down towards the category of a 380 where you can get penetration or you can get expansion, but most loads won't give you both. One exception is that lead semi wad cutter hollow point. And I know this is old technology, so call me a FUD if you like, but as I said, this was the number one load in our Police Marksman Stopping Power Study, and we tested 9mm, 38s, 357s, uh, 45s. We didn't test them. We had reports from officers involved in shootings with those four calibers. And the number one caliber was, at, at a, I believe about 78%, was that 38 lead semi wood cutter hollow point. Right next to it, about a percentage point behind, was the 357 Magnum 125 grain jacket at hollow point, which was another great performer. But that's a consistent load for 38s, and it's still a pretty good choice today. In most calibers, I've talked about the fluid transfer monolithic bullets made by Lehigh Defense. They're loaded by Underwood, Black Hills Ammo, probably a couple of other companies as well. They give consistent penetration, and those flutes, depending on how you interpret what they do, the flutes can cause damage, perhaps equal to a hollow point. But the thing is, they're always going to give you good, solid penetration. 
Simple wad cutter loads. Target 38 wad cutter target loads are really not a bad round to fire, especially in those alloy frame, those really lightweight snub nose revolvers. They penetrate generally beyond the 12 inch minimum, sometimes going 13, 14 inches. They don't expand at those kind of velocities, but the difference is jacketed hollow point that doesn't expand or the round nose lead, they just kind of push their way through tissue where that wad cutter cuts. And if you fire them at paper targets, you know, instead of that hole with a star around it, like most bullets give you, wad cutters will actually cut a hole in the paper. And that flat, blunt effect, when, when I met Dr. Fackler and talked with him extensively, he said a flat nose bullet can be almost as effective as one that expands because that, that flat impact kind of sends the shock waves out in a different way. It tends to cut tissue and cut blood vessels rather than push them out of the way. So wad cutters are not a bad load, uh, especially in the lightweight revolvers. Over the years, those of us that hand loaded, we had all kinds of tricks for the 38 Special. We'd take the, 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 wad, the wad cutters are actually a hollow base to put the weight forward, keeps them uh, more accurate out to 50 yards. But there's the kind of hollow point, I'll show you close-ups again. We would load them backwards, turn them around. I, I would always leave a little bit sticking out, some people would see them flush, but they can work. And here's an example. There's the 38 wad cutter bullet. There's what it looks like front on. When you load it reversed, you got that big hollow point. And they expand out fairly well and they tend to penetrate to about 12 to 13 inches of depth. So even when you invert these things, they work pretty well. Another kind of interesting load I thought that uh, Remington used to make is called a multi-ball load. And Handlers can make these as well. What you need are two, you know, you can get 0.360 diameter pure lead balls, which generally are used in muzzle loaders, or a triple aught buckshot pellet is just the right diameter as well. You can see two of these in a case with a light powder charge. They don't expand. They penetrate to 13, 14 inches, so they penetrate pretty well. And generally, they will impact within an inch or two of each other at normal, normal self-defense ranges. So what you're getting is you're drilling two holes for each pull of the trigger. Very mild load, very easy to shoot. Remington has not made them for years. I'm not aware of anybody making the multi-ball loads now. But no expansion, but you're going to get the penetration you need and you're getting extra holes. So, you know, firing five from a, from a J-frame would be like giving somebody essentially a loaded 12-gauge buckshot. There's just a lot of variations in, you know, what creative people can do out there. I mentioned that the 4-inch revolvers are, are not that common anymore. This is a, an old Model 10 Smith & Wesson that I've had for ages. It was well, well worn when I got it in a, in a trade deal one time. The guy I worked with out in Wyoming, uh, one, of the, one of the senior guys, was actually a Smith & Wesson armorer. And I'm kind of an amateur Smith & Wesson armorer. And this thing spit lead pretty bad when I got it. So you can, you can remedy that by replacing the hand, the, the part that rotates the barrel that wears so you need to rotate it a little bit further and I believe the highest number hand you can get is a number six that's the longest one beyond there you've just got a revolver that's worn out and we got this to spit quit spitting lead with a number six hand so it's it's pretty well worn but it's an old beater you know it's great to, to leave locked up out in my workshop or back in Wyoming it was always in the uh, console of my truck just a spare revolver but for concealed carry, I think most people are going with the shorter barrels, too. There are three-inch snub noses out there that are nice. I think they're really a little bit well-balanced. Well you gain just a little bit of velocity over uh, what you get in the two-inch. One of the biggest problems with the snub nose barrels, in my opinion, is the ejector rod. If you notice, it's longer in the four-inch. I can actually push that case completely out, and it falls free. With the 38 snub, the ejector rods, because of the length of the barrel, on a two inch barrel, you don't get that case clear out. There's a good quarter inch or more that needs to come out. So the best way to work these snub noses when you're ejecting rounds, you can't, you just don't. I mean, I was taught to fingers through, push it, and go with my reload with a strong hand. That won't work a lot of times, especially with a heavy load. The more pressure that the cartridge generates, the more sticky it is to, to be pushed out of the cylinder. 
So a lot of times with this, you need to pop it pretty good to get some momentum and knock those cases out. So that is a shortcoming with the two inch barrel. So if you find a nice three inch barrel, I think that's a good way to go. Uh, with the 357, a lot of those come in two and a half or three inch barrels. That helps with ejection. So I, I'm not gonna begin to cover what's out there. Smith & Wesson makes huge variety of 38 snub nose. Colt is back in the 38 revolver business, so they're making some now. Charter Arms has a lot out there. Ruger has their LCR. Taurus makes a lot of 38 snub nose. So there are a lot of them out there. I don't think I would ever carry a six shot revolver as my primary concealed carry weapon anymore. And, and it's not because of the round count. I mean, I'm, what I'm carrying now is a small nine millimeter that has seven in the magazine, one in the chamber and a spare magazine. So I'm not that concerned about how many rounds I need or how many bad guys I'm gonna face. It's just they're, they're a little bit bulkier to carry because they're not as thin. The cylinder takes up more space. Some people have a lot of trouble working the slide of a semi-automatic pistol. My wife does okay, but with some pistols she has a lot of struggle with it. For that same reason, some people with weaker hands, arthritis, old age, they have more trouble pulling that double action trigger because that's a pretty good 10, 12, sometimes heavier pound pull. But I have found people who can work the trigger of the revolver when they can't necessarily work the slide of a semi-automatic very well. So that's another option of why someone should have one. In, in my experience, in my career, probably as we transition to semi-autos and law enforcement, probably the biggest use I saw of the revolvers, and generally they were the, the, the smallest, so the J-Frame Smith & Wesson five shots, was as a backup gun. Uh, you know, with whatever your belt gun is, is your primary weapon. You've got a five shot 38 on your ankle, maybe, or uh, carried up inside your, your shirt with a pad that attaches to your bulletproof vest. That way, you've got a completely different action type. A lot of people think that semi automatics are jam matics but they trust revolvers to work reliably. And generally, they do. There are some problems that can crop up with revolvers, but generally, they are going to work dirty, they're going to work cold, they're going to work for you. So a 38 backup gun is really, I think, a very good choice. Power-wise, what are we looking at here? Short barreled revolver coupled with good ammunition, so I'm talking the lead semi wide cutter hollow points, or perhaps a Lehigh FTM, or one of the short barrel jacketed hollow point loads from Spear, Federal, Winchester, I think they all have one, dedicated to the snub nose. If they give the kind of terminal performance they're supposed to, then I would say you're getting terminal performance very similar to the 9mm. Generally a little bit heavier bullets, a little bit lower velocity, but very comparable. When you factor in the limited round count, 5 or 6, and the slower reload time, and I, I've not addressed reloads, but to carry a reload with you, you've got two options basically. You've got a flat strip of five or six rounds that you can put in a couple of, couple of rounds at a time, peel them off the strip, and that's how you load. Or, this is a number, this is from Model 10. Or a speed loader where you can load all six at once. Now, I said I had to change revolvers there because this is made for a Model 10. Model 10 cylinder is slightly bigger than that Colt agent. So you need speed loaders that are sized specifically to your weapon. And they make them for everything. It's just a matter of finding them. Speed strips, uh, they come in five, six. They come in most all revolver calibers now, if you look around for them on the internet. These are flatter to carry. They're a little slower to load. These are faster to load, but they're bulky. To carry them in a pocket, that's a pretty good chunk of weight that, that generally will print. There are some carriers made that will kind of split the speed loader over the edge of your belt and so it doesn't stick out as much. There are options, but limited rounds, slower reloads. Even though the 38 has the potential to have equal or greater power than a 9mm, I'm going to call it adequate, just as the same adjective I used to describe the 9mm. I would put the 38 snub nose at the lower end of adequate. But it's still better than the marginal rating that I would give a 380. 
but I think in terms of, of terminal performance, you're looking better than a 380, equal to or at the lower end of 9 millimeter performance. That's adequate. That'll do the job if you do the job and put the hits where they belong in the middle of the target. So the 38, in my opinion, is a viable self-defense cartridge. It is uh, even better as a kind of a backup. If you know, you're know you going somewhere where you think you need to have two, then a 38 revolver would make a great backup. Yeah, it's going to be more reliable. It's going to be better when it gets dirty, cold, wet. So that's what I think about the 38. It's still viable. It's There are too many of them out there to ever say it's dead. And there is just too much ammunition loaded and too much of a variety of ammunition loaded to ever say that it's outdated. There's so much you can do with a 38. And the thing with the 38 is, it's not, with any revolver, it's not ammo dependent. With a semi-automatic, you have to have ammunition that generates sufficient power to operate the action. With this, you don't. Anything you get in there that's going to go bang and push the bullet out the end of the barrel is going to work fine in a revolver. So reliability-wise, I think revolvers really do have a slight step up. Okay, that's the 38 Special. I'm going to talk about its son, bigger son, the 357 Magnum next. I'd like to ask you if uh, you enjoy these videos, you think they're worthwhile to you, could you please subscribe, maybe hit the like button for me and help the uh, channel to grow. We're getting close to uh, 10,000 subscribers and it'd be really nice to, to get over that in the next couple of weeks. So thanks for watching and y'all be safe out there. Okay, we've got them both here now. You ready? Bud got one. Ginger got one. Uh-huh. Oh, she missed it. She usually gets them, doesn't she, bud? Mm -hmm. Okay, girl, last one. You ready? You ready? Yeah! That's all there is till next time.